Good morning! Welcome to Lyme Regis. We are in the southern area of England and we're about to go fossil hunting and I'm gonna make a little video for you guys. It's not gonna be the best because the weather is abysmal but it's actually the perfect weather for fossil hunting because the strong waves and the wind and the rain and everything helps wear away the cliffs where the fossils are bring them down to the beach where we can find them. So yesterday we went out on a little tour with the local museum guide. He showed us how to collect fossils, where you can find them, taught us all about them, and now we're gonna go out and do it by ourselves today. So this area of the Jurassic Coast is actually quite unique because there are so many fossils here, they actually encourage you to take them, take them home, you can actually sell them. They encourage people to set up shops and sell fossils because if people don't collect them off the beach, they will just be worn away by the ocean. So we're gonna go out there, see what we can find. Make some money. Not make any money. Sell some ammonites. <laughs> the ones that we found yesterday on our tour were quite small and if you go into the local fossil shops here they only sell for about five to ten pound each so we're not rich yet but maybe today <laughs> we'll see what we can find. Chris actually found a huge one yesterday. It was just a little piece unfortunately not a full one but it was really big so the rain has stopped for the most part. It's quite windy though. I hope the tide is out enough. You have to check the tide times before going fossil hunting to make sure that there will be space on the beach. And I think it should be just about right. There was actually a landslide recently that uh, brought down some of the cliff. And that's like perfect conditions because there's fresh fossils that people haven't picked up yet. The museum sold me this little fossil toolkit when we went on our walk yesterday. Comes with a hammer, some safety glasses, if you are going to be hammering the rocks to open them up and look for fossils. But yesterday I found that I was mostly using the hammer for kind of just like scraping the surface of the sand to look for fossils. So today we went to Tesco and we got some ice scrapers <laughs> so that Chris could have one as well. So we'll probably mostly be using these plastic ice scrapers today. Just kind of sit through the sand and see if we can find anything without actually smashing any rocks open. This is a statue of Mary Anning, the famous fossil collector from this region. You can see she's holding an ammonite. This is what we're looking for today. And there's plenty of them on this beach if you look in the right places. All right, we're gonna walk down the beach about 10 minutes in this direction because that's where the recent rock slide occurred and that's where all the fossils should be. Got my trusty Tesco ice scraper, so let's go. Tesco ice scraper, oh my God. Not exactly Indiana Jones, is it? Jesus. Here's our first ammonite of the day. Um, it's actually an impression of an ammonite on the side of the rock. Here's a really nice one. You can see it really clearly in the side of the rock here. Look at that! Jiminy Christmas, that's a large fossil. <laughs> What's that then? It's a piece of an ammonite. Ammonite. The outside ring. And you can take that home. How old is it? 200 million years old. But still not as old as Riottero. <laughs> that. Just lying on top of the beach. There's about 10 ammonites in there. Wow. How much money have we made? Uh, probably about five pounds. Oh, <laughs> god damn it. So what you gotta do is Beautiful, um, pick those out carefully, maybe using like a metal pick. I don't know how to do it myself. I've kind of got to look into it, but yeah, look at all of them. And they're golden because these have been fossilized in iron pyrite. Fool's gold. So if you uh, clean this out nicely, they'll have some nice little golden ammonites. Beautiful. Fossil hunting tip. 
tip, probably the best thing that I learned yesterday. You want to look for areas of the beach that are covered in iron pyrite. That's these kind of greenish, grayish rocks here. And that's because the ocean has done most of the work for you and kind of sorted out the heavy parts of the sand and it's collected them all in one place. And the ammonites are often made from iron pyrite, so they will be heavy as well. And you'll find them in these um, areas with concentrated iron pyrite. So let's dig a little here, see if we can find anything. Without even digging, I found about four of them already. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, wow. There's a couple in there. There's another one on the side. That really didn't take much effort. No. Once you found the iron pyrite, it was job done. That's, uh, that's quite a big one there, if we clean that out. How much can we sell that for? Uh, five pounds. That fund my, my dream car. On there. This is nice. This, this is beautiful, this one. Yeah, it's already all cleaned out already. I wonder if that's a bellum night. That's exactly what I was asking myself earlier. Oh, there's more. There's more. Look at all those. That's a uh, stalagmite. Welcome back to Fossil Club. We're here on the beaches <laughs> of Devon. Look at this pyrite and some fossils and some trilobites. While a cliff quite literally crumbles behind us in the background. It's pretty ominous, this place. The cliff is falling apart right behind us due to the heavy rainfall and the winds. Staying clear of over there, so should you. Found another uh, good patch here with a few of them. And I found a 1950s penny as well. <laughs> <laughs> now that might be worth something. <laughs> so in Victorian times, this area was actually a great big rubbish skip for Victorian trash. And so the whole beach is littered with iron and steel and whatever this is, giving it something of a post-apocalyptic vibe. I mean, there's a big brick wall sticking out from the cliff there that collapsed in the distance. Like, it's really cool. For me, I prefer that to the fossils, going through and seeing what trinkets and things I can find. Charlotte's come for the fossils. I've come for Victorian gold, which is just horrible looking steel. Yeah. Jackpot! Charlie! What? I found something! What is it? Not a... Uh, ammonite. What's that? Oh! Loads. Careful, there's rusty stuff yeah, in there. Yeah, I know. I'm using your hands. Let me see. Well, somebody stole the scrapers. There's another scraper. Wow, they're all stuck together. Cool. It's a good one. I found some babies. Oh, nice. <laughs> God, we're getting really messy. I feel like I've just come out of a river. I'm so wet, <laughs> despite the waterproof clothes. I found a really cool rock, and yesterday when we were on the tour, the guide told us to look for UFO-shaped rocks, kind of like an elliptical shape. I found this one. Oh, wow. That is very much UFO shape. Should we crack it open? Definitely. I haven't tried cracking one open yet, so we might as well try one. She's been dying to get the hammer out and take out all her stress <laughs> on the rocks. <laughs> the glitz and glamour of fossil hunting. God, this is mental. I'm glad you've got goggles on. I, I don't, oh my God. It's such a weird shape. I don't know where to crack it. The pro is taking over. You can smell like the burner. 
time I come in prison. <laughs> prison break. He's <laughs> not having any luck, is he? Gave up on the other one? There was nothing there. Yeah. There's lots of iron pirate here, so this is a good area to dig around in. Iron pirate? Right. Iron pirate. What? Fish. Stop it. But there's so much iron. Let alone iron pirate, there's fucking iron just in general. That's a big one. Wow. Your digging paid off. That's a really cool imprint. Look at that one. All right, I think I am going to wrap up the fossil hunting here. Head back to the guys. All right, we are back from our fossil hunting adventure and I'm really excited to show you guys all the fossils we found. I'm shocked at the number there were. I caught lots of comments saying that it's pretty hard to find anything. Don't be disappointed if you don't find anything on your trip. So I really wasn't expecting to find that many, but as you saw in the video, we found lots and that was only a very small percentage of all the fossils we found. So I'm gonna show you guys everything and I also wanted to just give you some quick easy tips if you want to go and do some fossil hunting for yourselves. So tips wise, number one, be very careful. Um, the cliffs are very dangerous. So don't go anywhere near the cliffs when you're fossil hunting. Stay closer to the water. The cliffs are constantly breaking down and there have been some really major rock slides in the area. So stay as far away from the cliffs as you can and don't try to dig any fossils out of the cliffs themselves. Just wait until they naturally erode and um, fall out onto the beach where you can easily just pick them up off the sand as you saw us do in the video. Also, as I mentioned, tide times, make sure you have a chart of the tide times for the day and head out to start your fossil hunting maybe an hour or two before low tide so that the tide is on its way out and you'll have plenty of time to search and get back to safety before the tide is fully in because the water does come right up to the top of the beach and you would get stuck out there if you were out there too late. So be very careful of the tide times. And again, the iron pyrite fossils are the most common it seems. And the easiest way to find them is to search for those little patches of iron pyrite on the beach that the ocean has naturally sifted together for you. I guarantee if you look in one of those areas long enough, you will find one. At least if you go during peak fossil hunting season, which is what we did, apparently winter is the best time to go. And I think that's just because there are less people out there, so more fossils for you to find and the weather is a lot rougher, rainier. It's eroding the cliffs a lot faster than it does in the summer. So if you would like to be able to easily find something, highly recommend the winter. And it's recommended to go out hunting a day following a big windy, rainy storm. That is when you will see the most fossils on the beach. As for tools, you saw we just used like a two pound scraper thingy that we found at Tesco. Really anything that you can just use to kind of dig through the sand. You don't want to be sticking your hands uh, down there because there's lots of sharp pieces of glass and metal and it's really dangerous. If you want to use your hands, make sure you have some safety gloves on and you could do it that way. But um, yeah, I recommend a little scraper thing that worked really well. You can bring a hammer and a chisel if you'd like to get into smashing rocks open to look for fossils, but um, it does require some knowledge to know which types of rocks will have a fossil inside. I'm not really a pro on that because we didn't get into practicing that at all. But if you go on one of the guided 
fossil tours with the museum like me and Chris did, you can ask them all kinds of questions and they will teach you what kind of rocks to look for if you're into doing some rock smashing. <laughs> but it was really easy to just find fossils that were lying there without much effort really, other than just looking really carefully with your eyes because they are quite small as you will see. Okay, let me show you guys what we found. So this is everything that we found. Haven't counted them, but probably about 40 pieces in total. Some of these big ones are the first ones that we found because they were so massive and easy to spot. Unfortunately, they're not whole specimens. They're just a piece probably of the outside of the ammonite, but imagine how big that would be if it was a full one. And they're iron pyrite, so these are heavy. <laughs> this is a solid piece of iron. I really hope that I can figure a way to clean these off, take off all this extra iron that has attached to the side of it and polish them up. I'm gonna have to do some research on YouTube. But like I said, there's tons of videos teaching you how to do it. So should be able to figure something out. This one is really interesting. There are so many little ammonites in here. No clue how many really until I start to dig them out, but there's probably at least 20. Over here is our collection of iron pyrite, the golden ammonites. Again, tons in that little piece there. Lots of really nice ones that just need a little bit of work to clear out the centers. But I'm so happy that we found so many perfectly shaped ones. That one's really good. It's kind of a rusty color. I don't know if it's gone rusty or why that one's different. All the other ones are quite yellow, but that one's, only that one's kind of orange. Or maybe that one too. This one here is probably the biggest full ammonite that we found. And again, these only sell for a couple pounds in the shop. And that's once they're all polished up and nice. They're not really worth anything in their natural state like this. They've really got to be cleaned up before you could have any luck selling them to anyone. These little babies are really cute as well. And then over here, I have some rocks that have really pretty imprints. So one of these would have been stuck to the rock like that, I guess, and left a really nice imprint on them. Love that one. And this one, I would say, is probably the rarest thing we found because all the rest of these are made out of the iron pyrite, which is pretty easy to come by. They seem to be rather common, but these ammonites here have been fossilized in a different material. And I'm not a professional, but after looking online a bit, I believe it might be calcite. There's a couple of them in there. There's that one on the edge there, and I think some little ones here in the middle. So I'm gonna attempt to clean that up and chisel those out. Oh, there's some on the back as well. Piece of one it looks like. But I think this could be a really pretty color once it's been all cleaned up. I hope you guys found that interesting. We had such a great time. If you would like to go down to the Jurassic Coast to do some fossil hunting for yourselves, I will leave some helpful links down below in the description box with some more information. And I'll see you guys again very soon, back in Japan, because we're leaving in just under a week now. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.